Hello everyone, welcome back to some more From the Depths tutorials. Today we are going to be taking a look at custom missiles. If we walk over to the left here, we will quickly remove this because it's not working entirely as hoped. We're going to get a missile launch pad because we're going to be taking a look at the missile. So first of all, right over here we have the missile controller block like that. Connected up to some missile six-way launch uh, connectors here. Connected to that is a missile launch pad, which is where your actual missile is based on. And then we build a couple of missile blocks in the air. Now you will see we've already got the missile here. If you build a basic four length missile block high here, you get an automatic default design here. It's got a little short range thruster, double fuel tanks, two fins to give it some maneuverability, target prediction guidance, explosive warhead and an infrared seeker. Now this is the basic missile. There's also different kinds, we'll go through them in a minute, but first, there's a lot of different parts here. Let's go through them all in quick order. We've got a regular body here, which is functionless, it's literally just there to give the missile some extra length and some kinetic impact. You've got fins to help you maneuver, then you have fuel tank, basically every fuel for the thruster. You've got a short range thruster, it's fast but it guzzles fuel. You can specify a star delay, so you can tell it to wait, for example, 6 seconds before it actually starts. And a maximum burn duration of 20. Maximum, so you can tell it to hey, burn for only like 3 seconds, or just burn for 20 seconds. There's also warhead arming delay, useful for when you just got off the ship, and you, ha you might have some risk of hitting yourself. In that case, it's useful to have the warhead arming delay up higher because it will not fire until the warhead is actually armed. And then there's also guidance activation delay down here. Basically every missile has guidance whether it be infrared or beam beam rider or beam designated or lua. You can also code missiles with lua in this game. I'm not going to be showing any of that because that is basically way too advanced and we're going for a global picture of basically anything about missiles except for the really in-depth Lua stuff. But anyway, on from that we have the explosive warhead, which is basically an HE shell. It's really that simple, the explosion will be localized unless you use a certain fuse. Then there's target prediction guidance, there's two different var varieties of this. There's target position prediction guidance, and then there is augmented proportional navigation guidance, or APN guidance. APN guidance uses the fins to accelerate the missiles so that the target is at a constant bearing. And because of the large angles, this might not play well with one turns, which we'll discuss later, or infrared seekers. Speaking of, here's the infrared seeker. Automatically acquire targets in a 120 degree forward facing field of view. So basically, if you have the nose here, in a 60 degree angle from there to there, it will roughly detect the, in, uh, the enemy ship. Next up we have a beam rider receiver, which is useful for following the beam given by a missile laser block. Useful for engaging fast air targets, as it doesn't have to be pointed at the target until terminal stages. But the beam needs to be within 30 degrees of the missile, or the missile will not see the beam with this beam rider receiver. And then there's the laser designator receiver, which only fits on the nose, just like the infrared seeker. It's basically the same, except it will point at where the missile laser block is pointing at, no matter what. Next up is a proximity fuse. If you want to use it as a flak weapon, for example, you can tell it to explode at a certain distance from the enemy ship. And you can send deadly little fragments out, and you can use it as canister to kill crew. Although there's not really that much crew in the game, because of course only the player faction really has people on board and running around. Next up, the safety fuse. This will stop the missile exploding on the vehicle it was launched from under any circumstances. So, let's say we have another missile launcher over here and we launch it here and it hits here. Even after the missile arming delay, it will not blow up. Next up is the one turn, which is pretty useful. We'll take a look at this missile real quick. We'll put a one turn right here. 
and then we'll show you what the one turn does. Oh wait, it's laser guided, never mind. In that case, we'll just put it on here. Now, if we look at this direction, it should automatically turn in that direction, but eventually we just ended up targeting this platform because we don't have one important block on here. That is one of these. Identify friend or foe. There we go. Identify friend or foe is pretty useful. Now we should just be able to turn it in this direction. There we go. And then he detected the little boat that I have out here for training purposes. So it automatically toggled onto there. But yeah, basically the uh, the one turn is used to give it a single turn. So for example, if I'm looking in this direction, it's gonna turn in that direction, as you can see. And then if we turn around, after the missile is done reloading, let me place some more ammo barrels here, just so that will be done quicker. It does take a certain amount of time, of course, and the longer your missile is going to be, the longer it takes, and the more ammunition it will take. Anyway, if you now look at that direction, it's now going to turn in that direction. So that's what a one turn is for. And let me just quickly reinstate this missile here. There we go. You can also put a camera on there for the infrared seekers. Can be attuned to attack center of mass, shields, or a particular random block. So if you want to have like a rack of 20 different, 20 missiles that all fire at the same time, you might want to give them cameras so they do some sub-targeting. It makes swarm missiles a lot more effective. You can also make this missile work as a harpoon. You can stick a harpoon on the top of the missile, or just on some on the missile itself here. For example, we now have... Oh, let me just quit out of that menu. We now have... A harpoon fit in here and then below that at the one turn we could technically place a cable drum now we have 600 meters of rope in here and if we fire it as soon as we hit it should oh wait I forgot turns out you need a missile winch on there which does make sense now we can actually fire the harpoon and use it to target enemy ships and get them stuck in so they quit moving around so often and there you can see the rope it only has a 600 meter range press caps to get towards the uh, the missile that we just launched we passed 600 meters and it broke but yeah that's our booms in a nutshell you can use them to trap enemy vehicles etc so they won't move around giving you an easier shot next up is sticky flares which will demonstrate on another launcher in just a minute. Then there's EMP warheads, which is basically an EMP shell. It does some EMP damage. It's good for taking out AI and shielding and that sort of thing. Missiles go through shields, which is why they are one of the more preferred methods for taking out shields. Especially if you give them a camera with infrared seeker to target shielding. Miss missiles will just go through shields no matter what strength they are. They don't get any chance of being shrugged off by them. But in turn there are other anti-missile defenses. But we'll get to those in a minute. There is then the single pixel IR seeker which is also only fitted on the nose. It's only got a 70 degree forward facing field of view. So basically if you want to launch swarm, missile, uh, swarm missiles directly at the target you can use small pixel IR seekers they have less drag and the missile will fly a bit faster. Because most of these parts have a little bit of drag, as you can see on here. It says so right behind the name of the actual component. And obviously the less drag you have, the faster the missile goes. The more range you can get. Then there's another warhead, the missile interceptor, which can only be placed on the nose. Gets its target from the AI's missile warning cameras. It will follow a single missile at a time. If it gets below 20 meters from the target, it will detonate. Hopefully, destroying the incoming missile. An interceptor can engage multiple missiles and can detonate its charges once per second. So, to make that work, we have a mainframe here. Set up with missile warning systems that are connected to the mainframe. Otherwise, they will not work. 
We've got a second launch pad standing here with a specialized missile. It's got a little short range thruster, one fuel tank, five fins, and a missile interceptor. Because you don't actually need any fragmentation or high explosive warheads on here to actually make this work. So, I'm gonna tell my boat in the distance to turn its AI on. We are gonna get some incoming missiles from there. And now you will see our anti-missile has basically tried to intercept it. But of course you can see they are not 100% reliable. You might want to fire multiple missile interceptors. And you could combine it with flares. And of course with a laser anti-missile system. For now let's just turn them off. They're not very effective but at least my setup isn't. It doesn't help that I'm launching it in the air, which takes it out of its field of uh, its flight path, basically. Anyway, let's move over here for the remainder of the missile parts. We've got fragment warheads, which I somehow overlooked in here. As well as... A, oh no, wait. I think I was just getting to those. Or did I skip somewhere? I don't know. Anyway, let's start with the torp torpedo propeller, which is basically a thruster except it's way more fuel efficient and you can also use missiles to build torpedoes I'll show you that in a minute we've also got a torpedo sonar which is basically an infrared seeker but for torpedoes you've got a magnet which you can place on your vehicle on, on your on your missile which makes it a mine you can have up to 50 meters range and a specific delay before it starts and then as soon as it gets close to anything 50 meters closer than the... Then it will just go towards it like a magnet. Because it, it's a magnet. Yeah, it's... It's not rocket science, thankfully. You can give it a special delay. Warhead arming time is basically the same. One thing of note. This will attract to the center of mass of nearby vehicles. And it doesn't matter if they have any metal on board or not. And it's, the game recommends it's useful for mines and depth charges. We've also got ballast tanks. And you can use those on torpedoes to go, or mines, to go to a set depth. Or you can leave it at a certain amount, which will allow the torpedo to set itself. Which is cool. Now if you have long range missiles, they despawn after a minute. If you add a regulator, they will survive for three more minutes. The effects stack. Use it for mine layers or very long range missiles. Let's just put a fragment warhead back on here. It's basically a little canister containing 50 fragments. You can set a cone on them, for example. Right now, if these warheads were to explode, they would go in every direction, just like a normal explosion. However, we can shape them. Now, for example, if you set it to 20 degrees, and this one to 30 degrees, it's all gonna go in that direction in a 20 degree cone. Basically, we've created a shotgun here. And by having this one further back and a little bit more spread out with the angle, we've got a real concentrated blast of those 100 projectiles. Because there's 50 projectiles for each warhead. All right, moving on, there is... We've got the variable thruster, which is basically the same as the short range thruster. Except, you can tell it to uh, very slowly start up, or just very quickly start up, to its max speed, and then there's thrust per second. Normally, a, a short range thruster does a thousand thrusts per second here. You can set that to ten times as fast if you want a really small missile, but this will guzzle fuel. So keep that in mind. Alternatively, you can also set it to a hundred, or, or fifty thrust per second which makes it 20 times 20 times slower than a normal missile basically but it's extremely fuel efficient so you can have it go further range you can mess around with that all right lastly there is the thumper head which is basically the only head that you can put on the front of the missile that makes it a dumb fire missile without any guidance unless you have some lua programmed into it with a lua block and I think there's either a special attachment that you can give to the launcher or a lure receiver which you can put on the top. 
Yeah. Is required to receive commands from the Lua box via the Lua transceiver attached to the launch pad that this missile was fired from. Without this component, the commands will do nothing. But yeah, we have a laser designator missile set up here, and I did tell you that I was going to show how those work. So, if we select our missile, you can now see, when we're aiming into the air, nothing happens. You get a red beam, you're not going to hit anything. When we get a green beam, that is not on our own vehicle, we have a target selected. So we can try selecting the boat here, in the distance. It's a bit far away, so we can try and use our binocs instead. There we go, that looks like a hit. Now let's fire. We don't need a one turn on here, because it will automatically target where the beam is facing. And there goes our missile. And we've got a lovely hit in the boat. And you can set these to target themselves. Or do the targeting for themselves, rather. If we go and press Q on this missile laser emitter block, you can tell it to either control for the missiles that it's attached to. You can turn it off completely. You can tell it to designate missile targets for your entire team. Or just for your own vehicle. So, for example, if I made this missile into a beam rider and told it to accept the... There we go. If we were to go into the laser designator receiver head here, we can tell it to only aim at our own lasers. And you have to tune these both, otherwise they won't work. Or you can tell them to aim at our vehicle's lasers. Tell them to aim at our team's lasers. And there we go. Basically vehicle, our own lasers, or the team's lasers. So you can have literally just, let's quickly get a missile controller over here, and I get a missile laser emitter, we'll call you number 3 just to make you cooperate with the test, I'm gonna re remove this one just to show you that it actually works, we'll tell this guy to stop um, aim at our vehicle's lasers, and now if we use this one, like that, probably helps if we actually do fire it. So let's quickly fire this missile. It's got no guidance. And now it does. Hopefully. Oh no, wait. I forgot the misstep of not telling it to designate for this team. And now the missile is gone. So yeah, it's a bit annoying to do, but it's definitely possible. We'll launch another one and now it should work. There we go, you can see as I'm moving the beam around, the missile automatically turns around. And we just sent it into the water, there we go. Now there is more to all this, because with these infrared seekers of course, there is sticky flares, which I will be demonstrating now. Now you're gonna tell me, this doesn't work. And I know it doesn't work, we can try launching it anyway. Flare went off, that's alright. But it didn't fly. It didn't have any propulsion. Which can be annoying if you're trying to keep this flare small so that you can fire many flares. There is a solution to this. If we go over here, we have ejector add ons. Which we can fit to the launch pad. They have to be fitted to each launch pad individually and can have up to four. They need to be attached to these sides. You can now see we have four ejector cylinders added to this connect to this launch pad. Now if we fire, it gets thrown sky high. And basically the more you put on there, the higher it and further it goes. Now in this situation it went extremely far because we threw it directly upwards. Which isn't a bad thing, but sometimes you want things to go away from your vehicle. Which is also possible. If we now look at this missile pad, you can see we've got a lot more options. We've got ejection azimuth and elevation that we can control. And we can fling it in up to four different directions by just working on these sliders. So, let's throw it all the way to minus 90 and then fire again. It went completely to the side right here. And then basically if we turn it around he's gonna shoot off in this direction there we go 
Useful if you want to keep those enemy missiles away from your own vehicle. And you can of course tune that to be like, I only want to have minus 5, so it's going to go slightly to there. And then most of it's going to be translated into height. And of course, if you can up and down the azimuth, you can also go up and down with the elevation. And that just send it right over there. And of course, it also works the other way around. There we go. Very useful for keeping those dangerous missiles away from you. As a matter of fact, we can show you that. Let's tell you to go to 20. And you can now see, these missiles are still coming towards us, but that's only because they didn't have time to lock on the flares. There's actually more tricks that can disguise the, uh, the ship itself. For example, if we go to air, there's a heat decoy. If we place a heat decoy over here... Wow, that was even faster than I expected. Basically, if you feed the heat decoy with enough engine power... We'll just quickly throw down a small fuel engine here so that you can see what I mean. And then give it some fuel to work with. Not ammo, fuel. That's gonna take up our engine power. That's enough to run at 0%. I must be working on something else. Let's quickly upgrade our little fuel engine here. Not really the point of this video, but it does help illustrate my point perfectly. Because now this engine is going to create heat, of course. But the heat decoy is going to generate more heat. And if you give it enough power, it will work non-stop to pr produce that heat that you're looking for. And you can use different methods, combining flares and heat decoys. To make sure that your vulnerable parts don't get hit. Which is pretty cool. And last but not least, we're going to show you torpedoes. We're going to take this launcher, we're going to give it number 5 this time. We are going to give it a quick 6-way connector. We're going to add a identifier friend or foe on there. And then there's also this final block here, staggered fire add-on. Which we might as well demonstrate right now as we are about to end the tutorial here. We now have three launch pads, but we don't want them to fire all at once. So we're going to quickly make this a torpedo that we can be proud of. Double propeller because they are incredibly fuel efficient. Get a sonar on there. Fragmentation warheads. There we go. That's a respectable torpedo. You can see, we've only changed one missile. If we press Q, assign to all the same length of missiles. And then we can also save them as different missiles and then we can load set missiles on other launchers if we want. It also tells us how long the missile is, so you know how long it has to be. But anyway, let's get this guy killed already. Now. Because we have this staggered fire add-on, I'm going to set it to 0.5 seconds delay. There is a delay when firing those torpedoes. And off they go. He hasn't seen the target, but the rest of them sure have. You can see they are targeting his lead beam. You can see the angular drag, target distance, turning speed, forward velocity, and fuel and distance from launch pad. Now that we're about to hit, let's take a quick and closer look. There we go, because of the shallow draft, our second torpedo missed. But with a little bit of luck, he's turning around. Eventually he's going to run out of fuel, but before he does that, we get another hit in. There we go. So, that is pretty much all there is to missiles. Except for Lua, but you can look up an advanced tutorial for Lua. I'm not going to go into that today. I might do one myself at some point, but I'd have to do a lot of research. Anyway, I hope that you learned something from this closer look at custom missiles.
as our heat decoy does its job and gets taken out immediately. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you learned something, please let me know down below. It would make my day if you did. But yeah, if you liked the video, please leave a like down below, leave a comment if you have anything to say, and until next time, have a good one, folks.